Hi, I'm Brooke. I'm a second year McMaster physician assistant student and I just finished my elective rotation in radiation oncology. Yeah, so uh, my name is Brooke Grant. I'm a physician assistant student for McMaster in my second year. I'm about one month into my uh, clerkship. Uh, in terms of my background, I did my undergrad at Western uh, in um, medical sciences, so I graduated with a Bachelor of Medical Science uh, with a specialization in interdisciplinary medical sciences. And then I applied for the PA program towards the end of my degree um, and got in that cycle, so congratulations. <laughs> and how did you hear about the PA profession? The first exposure I had to it was from a friend who was on a charity committee that I was on in undergrad. So when I was in second year, I heard he was applying to it and that he got into the program. So that's when I started doing my own research and kind of figured out that's what I wanted to pursue after my undergrad. So what really attracted you to, so what really attracted you to this profession? So one thing that attracted me was knowing someone who had experienced the program and had a good experience in the program. Uh, so I knew going into it, I'd get a good education uh, from being in the program. And then in terms of the actual physician assistant career, I just really like the fact that after two years of um, training, we can kind of get right into the workforce um, with st while still having a high level of autonomy and a really good medical background. Um, so I just thought that was really attractive, being able to kind of switch specialties if that's something that you're interested in doing in the future. Um, so you just finished your first rotation. So you just finished your first rotation. Tell us a little bit about that. So my first rotation was in radiation oncology at UHN. Um, I started at the beginning of September and it was my first um, rotation. I started in an elective. Uh, so essentially um, there are three different divisions of oncology practice. You can go into radiation oncology, uh, medical oncology, which deals more with chemotherapy and immunotherapy, different types of systemic um, therapies, and then surgical oncology. So uh, we were dealing with uh, radiation oncology for the month. Um, the great thing about it was I got a lot of exposure to different um, groups uh, throughout the month. So I could spend the morning in breast clinic, afternoon with GU, the next morning in the skin clinic. So I got a lot of exposure to the different types of cancer, different uh, physicians. and So what made you choose radiation oncology at Princess Margaret as an elective? So it was um, Maitri Patel, she's who I organized my placement through. Um, I saw at the interview that she did with Anne Dang um, at the end of last year, early this year, and I'd heard about radiation oncology through some people I know in medicine who are thinking about pursuing that for their residency. Uh, so knowing that there was a PA in the field, I did my uh, longitudinal placement uh, in the middle of first year and just had a really good experience. There's really good teaching. Um, everyone was just really welcoming while I was there and I just thought it'd be a really good learning experience for my first rotations. What challenges did you experience starting with an elective as opposed to most other PA students who start with a core rotation such as family medicine or ER? I think the the hardest part of starting with an elective was knowing I was going into something that I could potentially be interested in pursuing as a career later on. So I had high expectations of myself, um, wanting to make a good impression for uh, the different physicians and PAs and other healthcare um, practitioners that I'd be working with throughout the month. So I kind of had to go from having these high expectations and worrying about not making um, as good an impression as I would have if I was doing it as my last rotation. Um, and focus more on making an improvement throughout the four weeks, um, just going from kind of not having any experience seeing patients to being able to go in, take a history, a case present, and dictate and see kind of new patients a little more independently throughout the month. So it was more of my mindset that I had to get past for the first, for the first month. What were your learning objectives prior to your first clinical placement? So some of the more basic learning objectives were um, gaining a good amount of experience, taking histories, doing physical exams, um, learning kind of what the important questions are and what sort of things you can leave out of a patient interaction, being able to dictate and um, 
navigate the EMR was a big part of what I wanted to learn. Um, so all those base skills that I know I'll take into the rest of my placements, uh, that was a big objective for me. Then also specific to radiation oncology, I wanted to learn about tumor staging, how the radiation oncologists work with medical oncologists and surgical oncologists, and how that sort of interaction plays out in practice. Um, those were some of the main objectives I had. I also, a big one, was wanting to learn how to read imaging. Um, that's something I got a lot of exposure to in this placement. What kind of imaging exposure did you get? So mainly uh, CTs, PET scans, some MRIs um, were the big ones, learning how to differentiate blood vessels in a scan from uh, tumors or nodules when you're looking at um, the basic anatomy of scans. Um, in terms of a PET scan, trying to figure out where um, the common sites of uptake were and differentiating that from an actual um, metastatic nodule. Overall, would you say you met your goals? Yeah, I'd say I met all the goals that I had set out. Um, when it comes to history and physicals and case presentations, that was something I was getting a lot of experience doing, particularly with new patients, um, because in first year, uh, you tend to if you go to a longitudinal placement, you'll see a lot of follow-up patients because you're new to patient interaction. Um, so throughout this placement, I saw a lot of new patients, uh, was able to spend time looking at their histories and uh, doing a full comprehensive look at kind of the story of their diagnosis and what brought them into clinic and things like that. So I feel like I definitely developed um, skills in that area. Um, and then also being able to participate in rounds um, was something that gave me good exposure to learning how the different oncology specialties work together to come up with a comprehensive treatment plan. Um, specifically last week, uh, during one of the GU clinics, there was a patient who was referred to one of the radiation oncology physicians um, for radiation treatment. Uh, and it was kind of a complicated case. They weren't exactly sure how to approach the treatment plan. So they let me present the case at two reports this afternoon. Um, and there was talk between the surgeons, between the radiologists who read the scans, between the radiation oncologists, medical oncologists, um, to kind of come up with what the next step in the treatment plan should be. So um, I got good exposure to um, kind of the interdisciplinary teamwork that happens, especially at a place um, uh, like UHN that has really good um, experience for learners overall. Did you, um, what can a clinical clerk or PA student expect from a preceptor? I think what a PA should be expecting from a preceptor is that um, no matter how busy they are, they'll take the time to teach you. It may not be directly after the case you see, um, but at least a couple points throughout the week they'll um, take the time to ask, what do you want to get out of this placement and how can I facilitate that? Because as one of the physicians I worked with this morning said to me today, um, it's you're there to learn. You only have kind of one year to ask as many questions as you want and so hopefully the people you're working with are open to um, taking the time to facilitate your learning. Um, and um, what was it like having a PA as a preceptor? Because there are some rotations where it's just yeah. not. So what was that like to have someone as their mentor like that? Mm -hmm. That was actually really important to me. Um, being able to do at least one of my electives with the PA because I know my core rotations I don't, I won't have a choice to do it with a PA or an MD, or there just may not be a PA around for those placements. So I thought it was really helpful because there's a difference between um, doing a placement with a doctor and a PA because you want to kind of understand if I work in this field, what's my role going to be? And if there isn't a PA there, um, the only way to understand that is to just through asking. Um, so in addition to seeing what Maitri does on a day-to-day -day basis, she talked to me about potential areas she sees a PA uh, being involved in, even if they're not currently um, doing that now, just different kind of niches that a PA could be that not all um, people would have been able to explain to me if, if I hadn't had a PA uh, working closely with me. Um, and just the fact that she kind of, she's been through the program, she knows what it's like, she knows what it's like to start in an elective, um, and so that was just helpful. How did your confidence change in your skills uh, compared to first week versus yeah. finishing out? Well, I was really nervous to start out first week, and um, I just thought, I hope I'm not nervous as much as I am now for like the whole 12 months of clerkship, because it's 
um, it's stressful to start out knowing that um, kind of you're always being evaluated and people are always kind of paying attention to um, what you're doing in clinic. Um, it can be really intimidating. Uh, so I think I've gotten a lot more confident in my skills. Um, I found that within the first two weeks of placement, I'd go to a clinic and present a case to the physician and they'd ask me questions that I couldn't answer and they'd have to tell me actually when you're presenting the pathology report from a biopsy you need to include this, 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 you need to have it in this order and I kind of hadn't done it correctly uh, which was okay I knew that I just needed to learn from the mistakes that I made and hopefully not make them again a second time um, but towards the end I learned what needed to be included and how different doctors liked things presented to them so um, I felt a lot more confident leaving um, those patient interactions, being able to answer their questions, um, and knowing that I had clearly made improvements throughout the month, even though I still can't answer everything that I'm asked, I'm, I still um, know that I've made an improvement. Did you have a personal learning project during your rotation? Yes, I did. So um, a couple weeks before starting my placement, I reached out to Matri to ask if there was anything I could do on the side just to enhance my learning experience. Um, since oncology is something I'm really interested in doing uh, and something I've thought of doing outside of clinical practice uh, in research, um, I thought if there was anything I could do that could give me exposure to the non-clinical side, I, uh, it would be something I'd be interested in. So I ended up starting a project um, uh, that Matri kind of discussed with one of her supervisors. Um, so basically what that entailed was for all the different site groups, so breast, lymphoma, GU, um, there are history and physical templates um, that are meant for residents or different learners going through um, new consults with patients in those clinics. It has some of the pertinent information that you want to include in a history all on one sheet of paper. Uh, which is really helpful, especially for me, where I was coming into it not knowing what the important parts um, of an exam was for all the different site groups. So my role in these templates was to kind of use them, see where um, I saw improvements could be made or things that were missing or things that could be changed um, so that when residents and fellows come through uh, the program, they're able to use them and it kind of allows you to um, put all the details from a patient's history uh, together on one sheet so you can present it to the physician easily and dictate it really quickly. It kind of improves the workflow that way. And what were your steps um, in the process in development of a standardized history and physical template for different site, cancer site groups? So my main process um, was actually using the templates that were already pre-existing um, for the first two or so weeks and I would note if I took a history and um, there were certain aspects that were missing from that sheet that seemed to be important or something that the physician wanted to know um, and then I would modify the templates as needed until um, felt like it was comprehensive. And how has this PLP helped your personal growth? I think it's just helped one with time management um, on top of full-time uh, placement, learning how to kind of set aside time to do um, a separate project on the side. I think it's good that I started out doing that so that for my next placements I um, am able to time manage when it comes to finishing work and having the energy to study on the side or maybe doing other projects in the future in my other rotations. I think that was one of the ways it benefited me. Um, and I think it just helped me learn about oncology, um, going through those templates and looking up um, kind of what the pertinent uh, details are for different types of cancer was kind of a way to solidify some of the things I learned in placement. So just to wrap things up, what did you enjoy most about this rotation? I think the thing that I liked most about being in my rotation at UHN was the people and the learning experience, which I know I've mentioned a couple times, but I just really appreciated the fact that any time I went in and saw a patient, um, the physician would let me ask any questions I had after the case was over. They'd sit down and explain to me the reason they've decided to go with a certain treatment or the reason they're deciding to just wait, watchful waiting and follow up. Um, just 
the learning experience was really good. I feel like um, I was nervous about coming into a really specialized field without a lot of background in um, some of the more basic areas um, of medicine that I could have started in, or possibly less complex. Um, but I just feel like I got a really good foundation of knowledge because the UHN is a really great place to learn. And what would your advice be for students starting with elective? Uh, I would say one of the biggest pieces of advice I could, get, I could give is um, to not just focus on choosing a specialty that you think is going to help you for the rest of clerkship. That's a piece of advice that I had gotten when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to start in when I didn't have a lot of clinical experience. I was kind of told um, if you go into uh, certain areas for your first placement, you'll gain more skills that'll help you with my next placement, which is surgery or internal. I feel like whatever field you decide to go in for your first placement, you're going to get the base skills that you need for all your placements. Taking good histories, physicals, dictating, um, those are just transferable skills you'll get anywhere you go. So I'm glad that I focused more on doing a placement with people I knew would provide a good learning experience. And uh, since I had met Maitri before, I knew that we'd get along. And so, um, and I knew the physicians at the placement were um, just really great people. So I think knowing that you can develop good communication with your preceptor and knowing um, ahead of time that it's, feeling confident that it'll be a good learning experience was kind of the best um, choice I could have made. Like, how can other students also be successful in a challenging rotation like this? So when I commit to something, I want to put 100% of my effort into it, um, especially in uh, an area where the cases are really complex. Um, part of what motivated me was just the fact that when I walk into a room, I want a patient to be confident that the person they're speaking to is the right person uh, to help guide them with their treatment. So since when we got a new patient, I was the first person that they'd see in that clinic before they saw the physician about their treatment, I wanted them to know that I had spent the time looking up their case. Um, so making sure I got in early that day, I knew when their tests were done, what the whole story of their previous um, kind of diagnosis up until that point was. Uh, so just that they felt comfortable when um, our interaction was done, that they were just in good hands. So I think it's done from me wanting to do well um, myself and make improvements uh, and get as much out of it as I could, especially since we only have two electives and oncology is really a field that I like and wanted to get um, good experience in. But also just for the patients themselves because it's a tough time in their lives and the last thing they need is someone going into the room who they feel like has no idea what their experience has been so far. And clerkship is a lot like a full-time job. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do after a day of litigation on college? Do you go home and study? Do you, do you confess? Like, what, what do you do? So it's a big adjustment because at McMaster we're used to actually being in class only a couple hours a day. Um, five days a week and then most of our studying is done at home so it's a whole different ballpark when you're kind of at work all day and making an adjustment to that um, and I actually live out of town and I've been commuting into Toronto so I would get up around 4 30 or 5 get the train in the morning it was about a two-hour commute to Toronto and then um, we'd be there 8 till 5 5 30 and then commute um, a couple hours home so I found by the time I was home at night, I didn't have a whole lot of time um, to really do anything except for just decompress, eat dinner, head to bed. So I used my commute time since I was taking the train. I used that um, for the first couple of weeks. I would listen to podcasts to understand more about the basics of what what is involved in radiation treatment, what are the different types of radiation beams that are delivered, and how are what are the differences in radiation treatment between different types of cancers and things like that. Um, and then on the way home, I'd use the time to um, kind of log my encounters, which we do um, at McMaster for all of our rotations, and do flashcards. Um, I've been trying to do that uh, for at least half an hour to an hour every day. Um, so most of 
all of um, the studying and things I did was on the train, and then once I got home, I had only about an hour, an hour and a half, and then I'd head to bed to get, <laughs> get up early the next morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, now that you've got to work with a PA, um, how has your understanding of what a physician assistant has changed from first year compared to second? Yes, so I think there is a big difference in um, the research you do in what the PA profession is like versus when you actually go into um, clinical practice and watch a PA in action. Um, you can really see how much more autonomy um, a PA has in clinic than you realize and, um, and how even in a subspecialized field, um, PAs are really utilized uh, well. So what is a PA? What's your elevator pitch now? So when people ask me what a PA is, uh, what I'll typically say uh, from my perspective is that a PA is a medical practitioner who works as an extension of the physician. So they're able to see patients uh, on their own and take histories, do physicals, uh, decide on treatment plans, um, but they also work really closely with the physician. Um, and so I think a really uh, important aspect of the PA role is working in a team environment and being able to work well with a lot of uh, different multidisciplinary positions. And can you sort of speak to how you make patients feel that they're being listened to? So what I try to do is even though I go into the room and after looking at their chart I had a good idea of kind of what, this, what the story was um, for the past let's say two years of treatment and kind of a good background knowledge of their medical history, I'd start by giving them a chance to tell me who was in the room with them on that day um, and just kind of get to know the people that I was talking to. And just, I'd start every interaction saying, I just want to hear from your perspective what your story's been and what brought you here today. Um, one that helps me understand their understanding of why they were in clinic, because sometimes people didn't even realize what the purpose of the visit was that day and that radiation treatment was kind of what they were in clinic for. And two, it just um, gave them the opportunity to just talk if they wanted to um, talk about their experience from their own point of view instead of me telling them, oh, so this is what happened at this time and this is what happened at this time. So I think I just did that by giving them a chance to talk right from the start. And what was your approach to uh, speaking with other physicians or residents or staff? Um, How did you build rapport and get to know everybody at the uh, uh, So I really tried to just be kind to everyone, um, make connections with everyone in the clinic, from the nurses uh, in the clinic who bring patients into the room to the physicians and the residents and all the other healthcare practitioners. I just wanted everyone to feel like um, they could approach me if they wanted to ask me questions or anything um, and hopefully build a good relationship so that they'd be open to me approaching them with questions. Um, and I just think that's important because when it came to um, one of our clinics is the endocrine clinic and after we talk to a patient and send them up for a treatment called radioactive iodine treatment, one of the nurses in the clinic will go into the room and discuss the whole treatment with them. Uh, so by kind of building a relationship with the nurses in the clinic, um, it was easier to approach them when I asked them, I have another patient that needs this explained to them, would you mind going in? And it's nice if you've kind of built a bit of a relationship with those people before you just ask them to do things for you. Um, you can't expect people to help you if you don't treat them kindly. So. Hi, I'm Maitri and I'm a radiation oncology physician assistant. Um, I'm a McMaster physician assistant program graduate from class of 2014. With most of the students, I try to ensure that they present directly to the staff physician because in real life, that's what a PE would do.